Hi, my name is Zoe. Hi, my name is Levi. Levi, do you take for water? Yes. Hmm, well let's answer this question. Should kids and babies take for bottles? Hi, my name's Christian Flutter and welcome to Ask Dr. Christian. Do you know how many bacteria live within our systems? In 2016, Sandra et al. revised estimations and suggested in the average 70 kilogram male that there are around 38 trillion bacteria living within our system. 100 billion of these live within our large intestine. In fact, 100,000 to a million organisms are found in every milliliter of saliva. Gross. But where does it all come from? It all starts developing at a very, very young age. Factors such as being breastfed, our skin-to-skin -skin contact, even the mode that we are born can start the colonization of bacteria within our systems. Now, normally we start off with what's called an aerobic environment, meaning that there is a little bit of oxygen present to help the bacteria live. With breastfeeding and other factors, we start to transition into what's called an anaerobic environment. And this is where we start to see the development of different types of bacteria inside our gut. Now, what can influence what's naturally there? So what could influence what's normally meant to be inside our gut? There have been many factors over the last 100 years that have changed the normal human gut microbiome. One of the biggest being refrigeration. A lot of the foods that can influence gut bacteria and almost are probiotics in themselves, such as live cultured yogurt or kefir or kombucha or kimchi or sauerkraut, these are all fermented foods that naturally grow a lot of good bacterial strains. And our change in diet has altered some of the microbiome that we naturally used to have. Now, there are other factors as well. Improper foods, too much of a sugary diet. In fact, even things like formula feeding may influence the normal gut bacteria. So this then begs the question, what does the bacteria in our gut actually do? Now, in 2015, Jan Hiala put it down to three very simple actions. Firstly, they're involved in the breakdown of food and other nutrients inside our system. Secondly, they're involved in the production of a lot of nutritional compounds, vitamins, minerals, energy, CoQ10, vitamin Bs. Uh, here's a list of them for you. And thirdly, they're also involved in immune system regulation. So what is it that probiotics actually do within our system? Some probiotics have an antimicrobial effect. So they work alongside our immune system, helping to get rid of any pathogenic bacteria. Some have an antioxidative effect, helping to remove any free radicals from our system as well. Some work alongside our allergic based system. And this is where we see a lot of the research stemming from. There have been 26 randomized control trials involving over 6,000 infants and have looked at the effect of probiotics on various health conditions. And they've found that they have benefit for conditions such as asthma, eczema, atopic dermatitis, urinary tract infections, the development of type one and type two diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, necrotizing enterocolitis, constipation. In fact, there's even been a meta-analysis looking at the effectiveness of probiotics on unsettled or colicky infants. Now this analysis showed that it was of more effect in infants who were breastfed than bottle fed. So what are the major types of bacteria that we typically find in probiotics? Across all major brands, we tend to find two types, lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, different strains of each of these ones. Now they've been well researched and have found to be relatively safe. Now I say relatively, because there are different circumstances. In the first scenario, we might have a healthy, happy, normally developed, breastfed bub, vaginally born from a mother who has a happy, healthy gut herself. In this situation, taking probiotics can be helpful for all those conditions that I was speaking about previously. Now, in the other scenario, we may not have all of these conditions met. 
We may have been born via C-section. We may have required formula feeding. There may have been other factors that have disrupted normal gut development. Now, in these scenarios, we often see an imbalance in the normal gut bacteria. And without knowing what that imbalance is, introducing the wrong type of probiotic may worsen that imbalance. So it is of benefit to find out what is going on in that kid's gut prior to administering any probiotics. It will still be of benefit as long as it's the right type. Now, what could some of those negative outcomes or potentially adverse events be? Well, I think you're just going to have to ask Dr. Christian.